All right, welcome back. This is still Standpoint uh, on TVC News. But first, let's also bring you uh, the ending of a ceremony of the service chiefs uh, that was held uh, yesterday in the city of Abuja. It's the final lap of the handing over ceremony at the Armed Forces Complex, Abuja. At the Defence Headquarters, Major General Christopher Musa takes over as the 18th Chief of Defence Staff. He urges the service chiefs and their subordinates to work together. It's a duty call on all of us. This is a challenge to all of us, not me alone as a CDS because I can't do it alone. Everybody has a role to play, including the citizenry. We must work together. It's a similar ceremony at the Army headquarters where Major General Taori Lagbaja takes over command as the 23rd Indigenous Chief of Army Staff. He notes the enormity of the task ahead of him but calls for more commitment from the officers and men of the Army. I promise that I shall discharge my responsibilities as the Chief of Army Staff with fairness, merit, and hard work shall be duly rewarded while appropriate measures taken to bring me, bring back in line anyone that errs. The focus sheets to the naval headquarters where Vice Admiral Awa Gambo hands over office to Rear Admiral Emmanuel Ogala. I assure Mr. President that I will do my utmost to uphold the trust he has put on me. In the coming days, the new chiefs will be promoted and decorated by the President. C. Fon ACN, TVC News, Abuja. Of course, that is uh, the annual, annual ceremony of the new service chiefs as they take over the mantle of leadership to steer. Nigerians uh, in terms of security. Um, Mr. Dixon Oxage, are you there with me? So sure, please. Yeah, so there's, there's been a lot to talk about in terms of oil theft, uh, most especially in the Niger Delta region. And some persons have said for this administration to really nip it in the board, there must be a real fight in terms of curbing the oil theft in the Niger Delta region. Do you see this you know, being, uh, being achieved as these, uh, the, the, service, the new service chiefs take mantle of leadership? Well, the issue of oil itself uh, has been a global issue of discussion uh, due to the fact that a former warlord was seen in the seat of power addressing the press conference and uh, also alleging that uh, the military authority the Nigerian military are responsible for most of the oil theft, 99% of the oil theft. Uh, for me, I think um, that wasn't necessary for him to speak say so in the seat of power. He could have said it anywhere else because he can't be abusing the Nigerian state rights, uh, the Nigerian military rights in the, in the seat of mm -hmm. power. That is to my own opinion. Uh, everybody has the freedom of speech. Uh, he should have just, you know, say it in his uh, home, home or whatever the case may be, not coming to the seat of power. Uh, because if that is also going to put us in a negative limelight as well. Because, you know, we're talking about terrorism, uh, all this why Nigeria being on the Global Terrorism Index. is based on what uh, the GTI gathers, the information they gathers. So right now, if the whole world is aware that, that Nigerian military are criminals, uh, or the Nigerian military is a, is a criminal setup, then it's going to be a negative one for our own uh, image. And we must be very careful how we brand our image and reputation uh, in front of the international community. Then uh, he has said it all and is subject to investigation, you know. Sometimes when someone complains whether the person is a criminal or not, that complaint is a subject of investigation. So uh, the uh, president should set up a board of inquiry uh, to, look into the investig to look into the allegation uh, made by uh, Asari Dokubo on uh, why those who sworn an allegiance to protect the Nigerian state have come back to, you know, uh, you know uh, embezzle the Nigerian state as well. The Board of Inquiry should be looking at those involved, the actors that are involved. Uh, for me, I think, uh, uh, I personally believe that uh, there's, there's an element of truth uh, in that allegation, in the sense that uh, we have a uh, check post in our waterways. 
Uh, the military are there. The, F, the Nigerian Navy are in our waterways, protecting our, protecting our waterways from uh, sea piracy and sea robbery. Uh, the Nigerian Army are also by the uh, creek side and also by the riverland area, protecting Nigeria from uh, external and internal aggression as well. So if we have the service, uh, the military and the other security agents in such uh, waterways and uh, in our oil uh, uh, a prone area. How come uh, this uh, criminal act is being uh, carried out successfully without being detected? So that calls for a, uh, a subject. Of, that, that's, that's a subject of the investigation uh, in, in the other part. And anyone caught uh, after the conclusion of this investigation must be dealt with decisively, so that every soldier and every officer serving this great nation must know that uh, we give them, uh, we, we put the trust of uh, the protection trust in their hands, so they are not expected to betray the Nigerian state. That I see as a betrayer, that I see as a, as a traceable offense, because this amount of oil you are smuggling and uh, diverting illegally to other parts of the country, going to sell it very cheap, which I believe uh, you are suffering and robbing Nigeria from uh, its own economic development and economical growth. So I think that is a subject of investigation. Then secondly, uh, the president should ensure that uh, that environment should be uh, camera-driven. Uh, because most times we fail to understand that for you to achieve security, you don't just achieve security based on security, uh, military might or policing might or uh, physical might. There are three measures in achieving security. The physical measures, which has to deal with our soldiers, our officers and men deployed in our waterways. Then also technological measure as well. We need to start looking at technological measures. So most times in the advanced world, you have these see soldiers by the creek side or by the by the waterways protecting. No, they are driven by the protection system is driven by CCTV. That is technological measure. Whereby why you are the whole essence of CCTV is just for two reasons. One, to protect crime in progress. Crime in progress in the sense that if any officer or any soldier, you know, is supporting uh, the illegal. Uh, a bunkery in uh, the Niger Delta, the camera will see what is happening. And from the command control center, they will be able to send dispatch to go to that very location or where that crime in progress is, uh, is, is taking place. And if uh, nobody is caught along the line, then you have to review the CCTV. That is post-mortem analysis after the occasion of crime. So these are the two factors, the two benefits of CCTV, containing crime in progress and after the occasion of crime, if that crime in progress was not curtailed. So I think the government should be looking at technological driven approach in our water, in our waterways, in our uh, oil, oil, oil uh, prone uh, environments, so that people don't think they can just come, you know, smuggle our oil and allow the Nigerian people to continue to suffer. We can't have a nation that is blessed with natural resources, and we have a lot of Nigerian migrating from this country to other country for greener pasture. Uh, this administration must put a stop to that, and everyone found liable must be dealt with decisively. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Dixon. Uh, Mr. Lobody, you know, Mr. Dixon talked about maybe it's not what uh, uh, Asari Dokubo said at the press conference, probably shouldn't have been said because of the image of the country. Some people, of course, might disagree with that opinion uh, because they feel that probably the military and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the people who are in terms of the, in, still in the hall are working hand in hand. It's that's their opinion. But there's something that you also said. Uh, probably I just need to correct you on that. I'm very sure you wanted to say terrorists disturbing farmers on their farmland, not Fulanese. You know, I'm very sure that's okay, what you okay, want to okay. say. Okay, yeah. sorry about yeah. Thank yeah. You. Okay. So <laughs> okay, but <laughs> but but going on. You know, when um, the new IG uh, Agbetokun, uh, of course, took over our office, one of the things that he said was that you know misconduct, corruption, and abuse of power would no longer be tolerated. But some Nigerians have also said that it was sending a warning you know, to, uh, to some Nigerians. But some Nigerians have also said, if you are sending these warnings to the larger society, also send the warning to your, to your men on the field who also abuse power uh, on the field. What, what's your take on that? And how realistic you know, do you think that we can actually actu we can actualize this in the real sense of it? I said before, the, the amount of rot on the ground is so huge. It's so like uh, passive, pervasive, it's everywhere. And it's a problem. And none of our wishes, dreams, and aspirations
can work in isolation. We need to understand that, uh, for example, let's, let me quickly go to the issue of the, uh, 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 the oil theft and that kind of thing. Here we have a seriously porous arrangement that everything is just like open. An ordinary uh, person around the area can take a bucket or can even take a hammer and a, and a shizu, uh, put hole in the pipeline and all that kind of thing. I mean, when you look at how the is, is such a, a, a most important part of uh, and I, I mean money making arrangements is coming from, uh, they are properly fenced. They are properly look at they are computerized. You can see. If a cockroach, if anything goes around to disturb anything, we don't have that. And again, most of our cry, most of what we discuss, most of what we are talking about in governance in Nigeria, is all about symptoms. And I think the cause and causes of a problem, if they are not dealt with, the symptoms will already be there. A good example is this issue of policing. If you, if you, if you say, again, I'm sorry, I mean, we need to say this. Uh, these are part of the, our job as uh, 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 public and whatever affair commentator. We need to say exactly as it is. Now, uh, the police in Nigeria is sometimes it can be very, very distressful. It can be very, very disgracing. And uh, a lot of things need to be done to address all these uh, uh, differences where you find the police wearing seal pass, where you find the police asking for uh, peanuts as a bribe all that kind of thing, you wouldn't dare that, you wouldn't dare to do that in America or in the UK or some other civilized country because police is one of the also the most important uh, uh, agency, commission or whatever, that does more of the, the governance. So in, in, in our country, we don't have, we still don't have that kind of culture. We leave the police just to fed sometimes uh, for themselves by themselves. And this is not going to help or enhance good policing in, in, in Nigeria. Uh, going back to the oil theft again, yes, that, that Adari and uh, Dukubo was making this, his own uh, press conference or whatever. It has his own merit. It has uh, other disadvantage. Ordinarily, this is not his job. Uh, he should have not been allowed to do that kind of thing. If he has that kind of information, they are very, very sensitive information. That kind of information should have been uh, uh, shared or paired with uh, the appropriate authorities, not him holding a gun and uh, making that kind of uh, announcement. If everybody were to be doing that, they're going to be more chaotic, and I'm sure that that kind of thing will not be allowed again. Uh, I can imagine that it's not going to happen again. So, but on a more larger uh, uh, situation, the the structure of the country in virtually all aspects of life need to be revisited, need to be reconsidered, need to be redesigned. They need to be, you know, put back into minimum basic level. And it is then when that is a basic level, that that is then we can start thinking of getting results. And uh, again, I, I say this is not praising President, President uh, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinumbu. That is uh, so far so good. He's doing a great job. He's making efforts to see that at least he wants to reverse, he wants to make sure that those bad areas are now covered and they are fixed. And when it is when they are properly fixed, then we can start getting a result. Again, the all tell thing. It is because the level of porosity, why, uh, how many people are uh, manning that area instead of the military money and then reporting or being monitored. When you do that kind of thing, if you look at a place like Saudi Arabia, that sort of area is, is, is computerized. You can't do anything silly like what is obtainable in some African countries. So all these are the things that we need to do and government needs to invest in this kind of a structure and put the system in place that makes it, good, make it so difficult that an average, whether you carry a more tank or whatever, you, you cannot even access the point where this oil is coming up. So without doing that, that kind of thing, we might be wasting time and money and, yeah, and expectation will always come to zero if, because we don't do what we have to do. And those are big, big issues. And, and, and I want to believe that uh, this government is hearing what we are saying, it's listening to opinion uh, of different uh, 
format, different people, uh, and they can put it into use. Again, let me summarize. The social security of the ordinary people is very, very important. This key is very, very important. Without them, again, because government for the people, and by, you, know, you need to carry the people along. They also need to play a role of, uh, oh, this is my thing. I want to protect it and so on and so forth. Without having that kind of thing on the ground, it might make life a little bit more difficult. Okay, uh, Mr. Dixon, I'm, we're still going to stay on these oil tests, but, and I'm going to quote something from um, the chairman, Federal Government Special Investigative Panel on Oil Tests and Losses, Major General uh, Barry Idiomo, recently called for the review of security architecture and the oil rich Niger uh, Delta region, and that you know, there should be a, 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 you know, a restructure in that region of the security architecture in that particular place. How do best you know, can, we, can we do this, knowing fully well that that's where the source of the money is coming from, to fund the Nigerian economy, for now? Well, the last speaker already gave an uh, example of Saudi Arabia. They, uh, it's most likely impossible for you to penetrate uh, the, the oil world. And, and uh, smuggle such oil world to go and sell in other countries, uh, that's a form of sabotage. Well, for me, uh, if you want to ask a uh, way forward in that very environment, I think uh, the way forward is very, very, very good. It's very, very simple. It's just for us to, you know, uh, make sure we give people responsibility to carry out the protection strategy. You know, who and who do we think have the capability to do that? But first of all, we must understand and we must be very careful how we, you know, play with uh, private armies, you know, or private uh, uh, owners of uh, 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 armed group that uh, think they have the capability to protect the Nigerian state. You can see what's happening presently within the Wagner Group and the Russian forces. You know, the Wagner Group, the private armies, and now there's a big problem going on there. So we have to be very careful each time we want to introduce the private armies uh, in protecting our waterways and our borderline. If we lose hope in our military, then we are planning to, you know, uh, lose the country called Nigeria. Uh, the reason why we are still in existence is because of the capability, efficiency of our military holding our territories and ensure the enemy intent. Uh, is decimated and uh, they do not succeed in their enterprise. So basically, what the president government needs to do, like I rightly said, is to you know project uh, security uh, mitigation factors within that given environment and also carry out a penetration test. Penetration test in the sense that uh, is it possible for someone to penetrate? And that is where access control comes to play before you get to that very environment or to the very place we have the oil wells or, or the, the crude or whatever may you call it, uh, we need to have an effective monitoring system. Monitoring system is, and the people of the world must understand that, hey, there's a monitoring system. And I want to tell you uh, 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 truly that uh, I appreciate what the last government did in the area of uh, setting the, you know, the, the, the what's it called, the, the ship at least, you know. People will come to steal from our waterways, who come to steal our national resources, the very uh, means of uh, their criminal intent must be brought down. And if we start carrying out intensive actions like this, nobody will want to lose the ship for the, for the, for the purpose of uh, uh, for smuggling. Nobody wants to lose, lose, lose his, uh, his uh, property. So we must put that as a front burner. Whatever you see on site, destroy. And anything on site, you know, there needs to be a red alert there. Uh, hey, this very zone is a no well, it's a no nonsense zone. Anyone seen here illegally might not survive it. You know, when we have strict actions like that and also have an effective monitoring system. Listen, the very the, 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 one of the best methodology for you to succeed in this approach is to have an effective monitoring and evaluation system. Monitoring system that will tell you from the command control center, hey, there is a crime in progress. This is what you need to do. If it's, if it's, if it's essential for the government to send in attack helicopters, send in attack helicopters. If it's, if it's for the government to send in uh, attack troops, send in attack troops to go and fetch these people carry, uh, carrying out these ill activities. So that we'll be able to have a lot of resources and a lot, a lot of money. We can't be so blessed with natural resources and uh, 
blessed with all the crude oil and majority of our people are still living in abject poverty. It's not done in, the, in any part of oil rich nation. M Mr. Dixon. We can oil and we are going through this. So M Mr. Dixon. The must ensure they carry out an effective protection strategy. Okay, Mr. Dixon, you, you know, you talked about the effective monitoring because one people have also said, you know, over the years, there have been allegation upon allegation that the military are involved somehow in terrorism, you know, there have been that allegation there. How do you effectively monitor a system where you have a system, uh, the people who are supposed to monitor the system are also part of the system? How do you eradicate that? Well, you know, sometimes people think it's very, uh, it's very uh, difficult for you to do that. And that is where crime and punishment comes to play. Are you with me? You know, crime flourish when there's no punishment. The only way for you to eradicate that when you put people who are supposed to protect the system, stealing from the system, is to carry out an effective punishment me 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 mechanism. For example, if, for example, you say, hey, Dixon, go and protect this oil-rich uh, environment. And I get there and I start diverting most of this uh, uh, crude oil, whatever the case may be. If I am caught, I should be dealt with decisively. That is what we call specific deterrence, which we send a general warning, general deterrence to the public. So if you are thinking that there's, a, there's going to be a miracle somewhere, there's not going to be. The only thing we know and we understand is that the same people that are meant to protect this system still have the constitutional right to protect the territorial integrity of Nigeria. So the mitigation factor now, which has to do with crime and punishment, the Major General is caught in line, is caught in that action, and is being dismissed and jailed. No, any Major General will want to be dismissed, shamed, and jailed. So the problem why crime has been flourishing is because people tend to commit crime and go scot free. What is the, our criminal justice system doing? The police, the court, the prison. Now I can tell you, most people that go to, most people commit crime, and they, 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 they are praying to be charged to court. You charge them to court two, three years, as the matter is still in court. Maybe they, have, they went to prison, no information process. So we have a lot to do in this country in the administration of criminal justice system and also in the area of crime and punishment. Punishment is a beautiful thing. Crime punishment is very essential. So for us to succeed, dealing with the military involved in these things, we need to get those that are involved arrested, get them dismissed, and get them jailed. That is going to send a general warning to anyone who thinks they can come and take crude oil under this administration without being punished. Okay. Definitely they will be punished, okay. and the punishment must be severe. That is how crime is being mitigated. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dixon. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, just to get Mr. Olabode's last word, 30 seconds. How critical is the appointment of the Minister of Defense and, of course, the Police Affairs Commission into this security architecture as Nigeria kicks that uh, the security agenda under President, uh, uh, President uh, Bola Tinobo. Again, I look forward to seeing a robust uh, 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 cooperation uh, and emboldening arrangement to make sure that uh, all hands are on deck. Uh, ordinarily, in most civilized crime, uh, the Minister of Defense or the uh, National Security Advisor do not need to have been to a military uh, uh, government college or whatever. But if they are being there, it's a, it's a, it's a bonus. But the reality is, from example, of uh, one of the former uh, security advisor in America, Gondola Rice, you know, she's, she's an academician. In, she was a very effective, very well-informed uh, 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 security advisor. So, so now we have a double qualified national security advisor in the person of uh, uh, new Vadio is going to do a good job. But what is important is that we need to realize that the chief of the chief of staff, the commander, and everything is a key person who knows who should know. He knows what he's doing. His overall boss, and there there are different layers where the chief of staff of the army, blah blah blah, all that kind of thing. They they have a process and procedure before they even get to the president, and that's why the most important part in this uh, defense arrangement is the National Security Advisor. All right. And I'm happy, I'm happy that we have somebody like uh, Nuri Badu. But All quickly, right. before, you, before I go, this issue of uh, uh, our borders, our, our oils, whatever, need to be properly secured. They, in fact, where possible, nobody should be living around that place. All that right. place should be dedicated to uh, 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 only that uh, product we are, we are exporting and so on. And so on. All right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. <clears throat> Uh, the two gentlemen, Ola Bodeo, Senior Public Affairs Analyst in the UK, 
and of course Dixon Osagie, a security expert and analyst. Thank you for joining us on the show. And that's our show for today on Standpoint. Join us uh, next week as we bring you stories happening in the world of politics. I'm Ademola Lawrence. Join us this evening for a repeat of the program by 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. tomorrow. Bye for now.